G'day mate and welcome back to Factorio with me, JD. This is the base tour. This is the base tour to end out our May community, open community map. Um, it was the Hot Potato in Space, which featured two mods heavily. Uh, one being the current flavor of this particular month's map, being Hot Potato, which is a mod, it's called JD Plays mod. Um, you can find it on the mod portal. Um, I'll probably never ever do a mod review for it, uh, a mod highlight for it, because it changes every single month as to what the current theme of the, the map is. Um, but this particular month, it had a timer that goes off every 30 to 45 minutes and just has 80 biters dig up out of the ground and attack one player. And the player is picked at random, hence the hot potato. Um, and the biters just target that one player. They'll ignore assemblers in the way that, you know, if they are shot by lasers, they will go and have an argument with a laser. But apart from that, they just target that one player. So this was the first map that AFKing was strictly banned on the map because you guaranteed whatever player decided to go AFK was the player that got chosen as the hot potato. On top of that, we've actually got the space exploration mod, which I'm not going to do a mod highlight on now because it's still in alpha. And after playing with it for last month, we can really see it has been an alpha. There's been lots of changes, lots of bugs. Um, it's been an interesting mod, don't get me wrong. It's a really, really good mod. I am really excited to see where it ends up. But right at this stage, I think it's still a little bit, little bit definitely in the alpha stage. Anyway, we're going to start off with our uh, miners. So this is not our starting iron. This is a early, early iron that we just built over because it was in the way. Um, and as you can see, we're, 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 we're down to putting speed modules and everything because clear it out of the way, even though it's been there for two well it's been there basically for th two weeks with speed modules in it and it's been there for the whole month and we still can't get rid of it and there's another 11 million that we built over um as you can see we're bringing it down here and combining it with our compressed iron ore i will link up to simple compress which is the mod we're actually using to compress the ore down up in the top right hand corner um and then we're running it into our smelting blocks and bringing it down and turning it into steel this is our steel dedicated line um, over here, we're bringing in compressed iron plate via train, uh, using the train supply manager. Again, I'll link to that up the top right-hand corner right about now. Um, and we're bringing in compressed iron plate, which we're then converting into iron plate to go down and feed smelters and this and that. And also bring up here and feed into our bus, finally. Uh, copper, we've got some compressed iron, uh, some compressed copper plate along with some compressed um iron ore which we're all spitting into the bus you know nice and happy to run our green circuits our make everything our sciences the whole works um we do have some meteor defense installations whacked up here as you can see these are all still placeholder graphics but i gotta say the guy who did um the alien biomes biomes which is actually a requirement of the space exploration mod also did the space exploration mod and i gotta say look the graphics are one of the things that just they're really really good you'll see more of them when we get into space but the graphics are one of the things that just sell this mod for me um see so yeah, it we've got we, we we've got you know artillery basically really really big artillery to shoot down meteorites because in this mod meteorites randomly crash down upon you and your base um, we have the nice, clean, completely tidy, non-spaghetti bus um, along here. As you can see, you just there are some areas you just don't look at. Um, good luck to the poor person who's got to route a belt through any of this area. Um, as you can see, it's all blue belt now, but there were stages where it was red belt in one direction, blue belt in the other. Don't ask. Uh, don't ask, don't tell. Um, we've got, you know, red circuits, solar panels, uh, purple science, uh, which has an alternate recipe for electric furnaces that actually require heat shielding, which is part of the space exploration mod. So as you can see, this is the the, the craft list for just the space exploration. Um, the only real additions for on the ground um, is one core fragments. So that let us put down a miner down. Oh, I've got to find it here, which just provided unlimited materials basically very very slowly unfortunately it looks like nobody ever bothered to find somewhere for the stone to go so it's just been backed up for ages um and it just digs up or at a very very slow rate like two per second 
and then you need 12, I think it is, to actually do anything with it. So it's a very, very slow, but it is an infinite ore supply. Um, and you can put down one of those per planet. And yes, I did say per planet, because in this mod, you can fly to other planets. Um, so yeah, we've got our, our electric furnaces here to run the purple science. Um, I think purple science is the first place where we get a recipe change. Yes. Um, we've got utility science over here, which requires our low density structures, which also have the addition of glass. Glass, again, is one of those few items that come up. We can use stone to make sand. Sand, when smelted, becomes glass. Um, they're really the two minor changes you find on the ground, but when you get into space, there's lots and lots more. Um, also, space science actually becomes something we can craft, um, which is a little bit interesting. It lets you get through, I guess, your, your infinite tech earlier. The catch is your labs, which I don't think... I think we even have any left. Uh, really poor uh, base tour I'm doing. Um, a lot of science you can't actually do on the ground. You actually have to do a lot of the science in space. Um, so over here we have space pipe, because space pipe is different from normal pipe. Um, actually, if I have some on me. It only has a reach distance of like six. It's, it's a very, very, very short reach distance. Um, have those labs arrived yet? They have. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually have room to do any infinite tech in it. Um, so it's red through to yellow, and then space science actually has to be done in space. Um, you do, or can, can is probably more accurate, can continue to make uh, satellites, which require all the basic recipes along with heat shielding. Heat shielding is another one of those newer recipes um which requires stone steel and sulfur and actually part way through the month the the sulfur the the recipe changed so sulfur was a lot cheaper um to actually produce uh, not sulfur heat shielding used a lot less sulfur to be able to produce one heat shielding um so it meant that some of our builds had to be either rearranged or or, or smartened up on top of that um we have our our list of planets. So if we bring up the star map, we can see this is the whole start map. Um, this is a community server that's been running for, it's been running for the whole month. Um, it has 13 days worth of runtime on it. So for 13 days and four hours, somebody has been actively on the map playing some part of the game. Um, but as you can see, even after a month, we haven't found all the planets um, or all the stars. You can see there are still stars out here that are unnamed. Um, there's probably more p planets revolving around some of these stars. I'm hoping that in future we can get to a, a zoom level so I can actually zoom in and see what planets are around um, this particular star. Hopefully I've picked one that actually has planets around it. Uh... There we go. Merlion, there's definitely a couple of planets around it. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I can't see what planets are around it. Um, just one of those small features that I'd like to see. Maybe it's in the future planning for the mod. Maybe it's outside the, the it, it's outside the limits of the game. I honestly don't know. Um, but the star map was, was very, very interesting. It was a nice feature they added. Um, we have colonized a couple of planets and by launching a satellite, by launching a satellite, we can get a, uh, no, Argon. So by launching a satellite, we can then bring up the map view for that particular spot in space. At the same time, we can actually go down and look at the planet and we can see what the story is on the planet. So we've actually gone and built on Gentry um, and it's got a little bit of a base up and running. Nothing too fancy. The primary resource here is meant to be iron ore. Um, and as you can see on the map, iron ore is definitely the more common. Um, it also has a life signs of zero, which I think is a big fat lie because there's definitely um, biters everywhere. Um, the life signs tag doesn't work 100% of the time. Uh, Ar Aegon was another one we colonized. Um, this one we actually used because it was covered, let's go to it. It was covered in trees and turns out you actually need wood for a lot of the space science. Um, 
So yeah, we went and laid solar panels on this one because that was the quickest way to get the bots out and deployed. And basically used the bots to harvest every tree we possibly could. Um, this was a fully forested map to start with. And the bots have been busy cleaning up every fish, every tree, every sign of life form that they possibly could. Um, if I go back to storage, it's empty because obviously somebody's flown there and, and gone and cleaned out all the trees and everything else. Um, anyway, on with the story. So we've got our base. It's, as you can see, it's a nice clean bus. No, nothing ever was not planned here. It was all planned from scratch to be nice and beautiful and pretty. Um, we've got all our sciences. We do have a couple of extra things that we need in space actually being built on the planet. One of them is space platform scaffold. So when you actually get up to space, there's nothing to stand on until you actually bring up materials to put down basically a ground to walk on. Um, and then you can go for the higher quality space platform plating, which requires the platform, uh, the, the scaffold, which you've already seen is, is not exactly cheap. And this makes it even less cheap. Um, you do get a large walking speed bonus on it, so it's really, really handy to have. Um, so yeah, uh, so off to space. So to get to space, there's two main ways to get to space. One is with a rocket. And as you can see, we've got a couple of rockets that have been automated. Um, this one's carrying up glass, red circuits, green circuits, and blue circuits. This one's carrying up plastic, uh, compressed, iron ore so we're actually lucky enough that because we have that mod installed we can bring up a stack of compressed or iron plates which means each stack is a thousand iron plate saved us a lot of rocket trips um, same with copper uh, and we bring up plastic and that one's actually for concrete which it looks like we're out of um, in saying that we have concreted the world because we can and it's not normal concrete it's refined concrete you know we're not cheapskates here um, then we've got, this one's loading petroleum, this one's lo loading lubricant, this one's loading heavy oil, that one's doing water, and then this one's doing glass. Um, so a lot of materials are needed in space. And when I'm talking a lot of materials, I'm talking a lot. Um, it's quite scary actually how many materials you need. Um, we went down this method of having rockets that were run by the circuit network to launch things up and down um, and then we went away from that after we got the technology to build spaceships and then we came back to the uh, way of automating things launching from the ground but um, whilst we're here we'll just oh here we go incoming tunneling tunneling biter attack let's go play with the biters first just give it a second Hunting jetty plays. There we go. So they've just dug up on the ground literally everywhere. And as you can see, they're actually ignoring just about everything and going straight for me. Um, we've actually been lucky enough that we've sort of minefield the whole map, pretty much. Um, so they do a pretty good job of charging straight for me. And Oh, they, they do... Ooh, train! Um, they still do light lasers. Uh, we've got a, a couple of other advanced weapons. This was uh, a Tesla gun, which I was really a fan of. Um, it's not terribly accurate, doesn't do a lot of damage, but wow, it's got a good light show. Um, so yeah, there goes another train. Launch. And come on, I want to launch this one as well. It's got glass on it. Um, we can see from our signal network, because we used, we used speakers, and I'll show them when I get up there. We used speakers attached to the Logi network to basically tell us on the ground what we actually were short of in space. Um, this mod, it's highly recommended you play with the AAI mod included, um, but it's not required. So I chose to play it without it being installed um, on this community map, which meant we can't send signals from space back to the planet and vice versa. Um, so we had to come up with alternate ways and what we used was lots and lots of loudspeakers connected to the network and um, bring, bringing, communicating back and down that way. Um, and as you can see, I've got a cargo rocket to sustain damage in transit as of course, additional rocket survivability and cargo safety research advice. This particular mod pack has so many, um, so many researchers that it, it's actually quite scary about how much research 
is in this mod pack and, and how much time you're going to be researching for your rockets if you choose to keep using rockets to keep them running and keep them running and landing reliable, reliably. Um, as you can see, um, we're, we're up to rocket cargo safety 11 and it is an infinite tech. Uh, rocket re reusability um, of 10 as well and rocket survivability of 10 as well. All of these reduce the chance cargo pods get damaged in transit by 10%. Um, basically moves you closer and closer to the final SpaceX goal of having everything re reusable. Um, increase the percentage of parts can be recovered from a successful landing pad. Again, rocket uh, SpaceX style, being able to recover everything. And then we have rocket survivability. We reduce the chance of rockets damaged uh, or has a navigation failure that results in missing the landing pad. That still happens quite I wouldn't say quite often, but at least one in 10 launches, if not higher, um, when we've got Research 10, which is increased by 10%, which means each time we get over another research, it should be even less likely, um, but it still happens fairly often. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to fly a spaceship because this is how we started transporting goods. I honestly recommend if you choose to play with this mod, spaceships the way they go, we actually have a cargo size of 900 they start off at about one or 200 um, they start off not being able to carry a lot but considering a rocket has 100 no cargo space of 400 and a chest has a cargo space of 48 um, you only need to have 10 chests in here to, to equate the same amount um, and with a size of 100 rocket i'll show some more rockets when we get up there you can see we've got some we've got some blank areas where rocket uh, where spaceships tend to land on this surface um but yeah you can see very very easily that they take up some amount of room but not a lot of, of room and they can start transporting a lot of gear uh anyway we're going to launch from orbit off to well from the ground off to the orbit Unfortunately, all the Wodgy Belts that are fl flying across the top of my spaceship get to come with me. Uh, there are a couple of mods. There is actually two mods that are required with the Space Exploration mod. They're 100% required to be installed. One is the Alien Biomes mod. And as you saw when I was browsing around the other planets, um, they look, look very, very different. That is the Alien Biomes mod. It really, really can make every planet look very, very, very alien. The other one is the Robot Attrition mod. Um, i got to say, it's, it's a really interesting little mod. Uh, can I? No. Okay. Um, it makes robots crash after a certain amount of time. And of course, if they're stuck around a robot port charging over and over and over, uh, they, are, they have a higher likelihood of crashing. It only happens with logistics robots, um, but it actually means we end up going through a portion of logistics bots with each, um, each, um, you know, minute, whatever, whatever words. Anyway, I'm going to deconstruct all these chests, which puts our 21,000 construction robots hard at work to go up to our storage hub, which as you can see is, is significant. I'll put it that way. Um, and, and this is one of the things with the space exploration mod. It's, there is a lot to this mod. There is a lot of tech to go through. Um, you've got to remember, look, the, these community maps, we are the first community that not only raced to the edge of the map, but actually made it within a month. It took us like 25 days to go from the start of the map to the end of the map with some really nasty biters. We had behemoth biters, behemoth spiders. Um, worms before behemoth worms were even a thing and our behemoth worms required 10 artillery shells compared to the default ones that need one and sometimes two if you're really unlucky with the first shot um ours needed 10 our spawn spawners needed two or three artillery shells like we did not make it easy on ourselves and we still made it to the edge of the map being a million tiles from spawn in 25 days it's like 15,000 tiles per minute or per minute or per hour. I don't know. I can't do the maths at the top of my head. Um, that we had to travel continuously from the start of the game to make it there within the 30-day time limit. This mod, we haven't finished the research. Like, it, it's, it's that complicated. There is that much to do. I will admit that 
when we were doing these researches, they actually had a 10 times multiplier on it. Um, so higher than that, actually, because this was a 25,000 pack research. It's now a 2,000 pack research. So we've spent a lot of research packs on researches that are now cheaper. Um, same with the spaceship structural integrity. That's come way down in price um, because now the mods really, a lot of the bugs have got sorted and now it's in the balancing stage. On In saying that, the tech trees are very, very much rearranged. Um, we didn't get, um, if I can find them, uh, speed. Speed modules require material science pack. Um, and productivity modules require biological science pack. We didn't get these things to uh, like 20 days into the game. This is normally tech that we're going to have within the first 20 hours. We didn't get them for 20 days because the whole tech tree has been rearranged and some of these science space science packs are really, really hard to get. Um, in fact, if we wander over to our labs, you can see we've got four labs. Like, that is it. That is all the labs we currently possess. That's all the labs we've bothered with. Um, excuse the flying robots everywhere. Um, but that's all the labs we ran with because we can't even run four. Like, at the moment, we're waiting on material science packs. There's two on the way. Um, a lot of the other science packs we've obviously got heaps of. Um, I'm guessing because we had that flag out that, down there saying we're out of petroleum. We needed petroleum to get this science pack running. Um, but yeah, you can see from the graphics, like, the graphics, i got to say, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the graphics make us this mod. This is this is some impressive graphics when it comes down to this particular mod. Anyway, uh, back to life and all things important. Um, let's find a small spaceship. So this is a f fairly small spaceship, but you can see this has a structural stress of 171 out of 900. I think the first research is 200, um, or maybe it's only 100. So you can build a spaceship sort of this sort of size, which does have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 cargo slots straight away. Um, yeah, and more than enough fuel to make the trip two or three times. Um, fuel is very, very different. I didn't go into fuel. Um, but fuel is very, very different because rocket fuel is actually a liquid item now. Um, and funnily enough, we're still making fuel on the planet. This is our fuel tanker that flies down, gets refilled. All these tanks flies back up and empties them into the stockpile up here we have for um, our uh, spaceships to go back and forth from, from planet to planet. Anyway, um... So yeah, okay, science packs themselves now that we're in space. Um, this is where our rockets landed in a cargo landing pad. Um, one of them didn't make it, so probably this space capsule here um, was from the rocket that didn't make it, because otherwise it would be neatly packed up, or, or this one, uh, neatly packed up into the cargo landing pad and the bots would have dealt with it. Um, speaking of things, we can see how many parts... So we've got 38 parts up here and cargo rocket sections, we've got 61. So a certain amount of parts have made the venture up and down. Um, space capsules, there's eight up here already. So we've had eight successful landings since the last time somebody came up here and manually cleared out um, manually cleared out what was, what was in these parts. So I'm only going to cover one sp space pack um, because honestly... Uh, let's turn off Logibots flying around. Honestly, like this area here is purple science, um, purple space science. Um, this area here is is this I don't know orange, orange space science. Um, this area here to here to here to here to here, all of this. Uh, basically everything north of the blue stuff, um, all of that, uh, and up through into here. Yep. There's more green stuff up here. There's green stuff up here. That's all green science, which was a, a, a giant. Let me tell you, it's a giant pain in the ass. That's the one that actually requires wood. So, you know, be warned. Um, 
when you chop down lots of trees if you install this mod do not for the life of you do not burn them you're gonna want them um we went through consumption uh will it tell me how much wood i've used maybe it won't I don't see wood in that list oh all time that's the button I want uh, not in the millions in the hundred thousands I expect 1.1 million wood boy was I wrong um, so yeah we we didn't install any way to manufacturer wood on the planet um so this was all naturally cut down from deforesting planets um anyway so back to science so we have get my orientation so blue science blue science comes in multiple multitude of different varieties um but basically i need to have a, a visible observation data an infrared observation data, a UV observation data, an astrometric observation data, and a gravit gravimetric observation data to make a astronomical catalog. Um, now, after I have an astronomical catalog, I can put it in this machine to make astronomical insight, um, being the first iteration of this machine. Rotate. Um, so I can make it into just a basic one and get one blue thingy with four data cards back. Data cards are a recyclable, somewhat recyclable part that you'll end up using a lot of and you'll end up needing to make a lot more of. Um, but I do have the option after I unlock tier one to unlock tier two where I take that first item that's already had six parts go into it. Well, five plus a fluid. We'll get to the fluid in a minute. Um, to add another four more with itself to make a broad astro, astro catalog thingamajiggy bob. If we go here, we can go in here and we can go, well, we can see here. We go from one and four to three and six. So I get a lot more science because those blue thingies end up turning into science. I get a lot more science back and I get some extra cards back. But I've gone from six cards in, four cards back to six plus an extra five cards in for six cards back so diminishing returns on those cards i can then go on to the next layer where i add another four cards plus the previous one um, to get a comprehensive astronomical catalog this is now tier three of the same science pack um, the main advantage of going up is they basically require less materials less raw mater materials from the planet um it's not always the case, but it is mostly the case that they require less raw materials. Um, here we're up to eight. So we've gone from one blue thingy to three blue thingies to eight blue thingies. And we're actually getting back less cards now. So, you know, those cards that are mostly recyclable, that one of those cards is required for every different one of the... One of the gray cards at the top is required for every one of the blue cards at the bottom. You know, you, you are going to have diminishing returns. You are going to have to go scavenge cards and bring more cards up at some stage. Um, and then we can go from that one into the final one, which requires another three lots of different weird and wonderful science to make an extended catalog. Uh, and if we come in here, we can now see there's a lot of materials going in, but we're now getting 20 blue things. Um, we're not getting any cards back anymore. All our cards are used up and wasted, but you know, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see the mod does point you in the right direction and does say, hey, it's more complicated, but it is more resource efficient. Um, I think you were set back to that. Yes. Extended. Yeah, so this one produces extended, which is not running because somebody put them in a box. Okay, um, like I said, open community map, all sorts of weird things happen. You don't always make sense of them, but you know, let's put it in after they've the machine's got its 
sandals. Anyway, um, so yeah, that gives us the blue thingies. The blue thingies then run into this particular machine, which needs the blue thingies, plus it needs significant data. Significant data we'll go venture off to in a minute. It's in a separate part of the factory, but, you know, it... it it basically needs a little bit of all the sciences to make a yellow thingy and a yellow thingy goes in here and, and makes a science. Now, as I was saying, blue science requires, we're just going to look at the base one, uh, visible, infrared, UV, astrometric, and gravimetric. Okay. Uh, UV comes from UV observation frames. Uh, over here somewhere, we have visible ob observation frames. We have some infrared observation observation frames. We have some microwave, some radio wave. No, they're T2. Uh, I'm not actually sure where the other ones have gone to. Um, from all those, we can use basically any one of those different tier one ones to convert into an astrometric observation data which was one of the requirements of this guy. That's the one. Uh, and we need a gravimetric, which is this one. Yeah, so we can make these three just by raw resources, making some blank observation frames, whacking them in the telescope to make them into whatever type of observation frame we require. Um, then to get to a astrometric observation data, we've got to convert one of these threes into that one. And then to get to a gravimetric observation data, we've got to convert one of those into one of those. Um, as you can see, there is tech on tech on tech. And that's another thing this mod favors. It really favors a chance of getting products. So if I put one of these in, I have a 95% chance of getting the thing I want. I have a 4% chance that I completely burn the data card and it's absolutely rubbish. Also technically means I have a 1% chance of getting nothing. Um, and what are those called? Junk data card, that's the word. Um, so yeah, there, there is a lot of chances in this game, in this particular mod pack to get something or get an absolute nothing. Uh, so, you know, you have been warned. Okay, as for liquids, now I didn't cover the liquids because they're their own separate nightmare. We have, and we're gonna come over here to look at them because this is one of our one of our arrays. We make, here, well, here. We make cosmic water because normal water wouldn't be good enough, not in space. Uh, water will not will freeze at low pressure, more suitable for space applications. So it's water mixed with lubricant. You can guess that both of those come from barrels down on the planet. So you're going to be shipping up a lot of barrels of material. Um, from there, you can turn that fluid into thermofluid, the default temperature of thermofluid. Um, so this is a, a cooling liquid, I guess is the best way of putting it, um, which requires iron, copper, sulfur, some of that cosmic water and some heavy oil. Again, you're going to be shipping up a lot of barrels from the planet. Um, you can then take your thermofluid here, run it through a thermal radiator. This lovely thing has three different recipes. Um, I don't... Like this one takes eight seconds. This one's slightly slower. And I guess it has less of a loss. Um, because as you can see, you know, I'm bringing in 200 and I'm getting back 199. Trust me over how many crafts have you done? You actually won't tell me. Oh, products finished 16,000. Uh, products finished 22,000. Like some of these guys have produced a lot. And these are not the first ones. They've been rearranged and moved several times. Um, so there is a loss each time you run through. Um, so you've got an 8 second craft, a 20 second craft, and a 32 second craft. Um, each have a slightly lower loss. Uh, so, you know, be warned, you might want to go with the slower one, which means more of these buildings, which all require more power. Or you could just go with the just the simple one and just accept you've got a higher loss, which means more materials have to be brought up from the planet. Anyway, we have thermofluid at 25 degrees, which then runs through a radiator that becomes cool thermofluid at minus 10 degrees. 
From there, it has a couple of choices in these machines. Uh, hang on. No, let's go down to the ones I know about. Uh, so you can then bring in the cool thermofluid into one of these machines and pump out some hypercooling uh, hyper thermofluid and spit out some normal thermofluid. So we can go from cool at minus 10 to cold at minus 100 plus the hot thermofluid comes back out and loops back around. Um, you also have another option up here of taking in... Oh, that's the wrong one. One of these ones. Uh, that one. Of taking in the cold thermofluid, outputting hot thermofluid again, and super cooled thermofluid. Um, again, as always, all of these have some... Actually, not all, all machines have a loss, but most machines have some sort of loss each time the fluid passes through the system. Um, so these ones actually break even. We bring in 100 and you get back 50-50. Um, if we go back over to our lovely little... Um, our lovely little telescopes, you can see we're bringing in 40 of the cool thermofluid at my, a cold thermofluid at minus 100 degrees, and we're only getting back 36 hot thermofluid. So we've always got a loss when passing through these machines, and as you can see, this is done... How many crafts? 163,000 for this one at a loss of 30, 30, uh, 36 and 40. So a loss of four thermofluid each time around. Um, that's a lot of materials that have gone missing. Um, gone missing. Been used when passing through this system. Um, so yeah, we've got our, our many, many different types of liquid. And that's just the thermofluid one. There is, well, actually, let's bring up the crafting menu. There is bio sludge, uh, nutrient gel, neurogel, advanced neurogel, uh, bio sludge, uh, contaminated bio sludge, contaminated cosmic water, cosmic water, which we've already gone over, chemical gel, plasma stream, ion stream, particle stream, proton stream. Uh, I'm sure there's more that I've forgotten about. Um, as you can see, the crafting menu is quite extensive. And just the, the list of buildings. So if we go to... Uh, well, look, even if you just look at a hypercooler, like the graphics are really, really, really good for this mod. Um, if I go look at green science, which is one I've spent a lot of time standing in, waiting for things to happen. Um, even this, this is a growth facility. And you can see it, it's like... It wobbles around. It does things. Um, you know, it, 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 it looks like it's actually working. Um, these guys. These guys are, like... They're pretty impressive. They're, they're, it's, it's a simple graphic that just repeats over and over and over. But the way it's done is just... It's amazing. It's one of those things that... I've, I've literally sometimes just spent 10 minutes just building a new build. And then just watching the graphics. Um, this is one of those machines that cleans contaminated bio sludge back into bio sludge um again it, it's like it's got a neat little graphic and it just repeats over and over and over it's it's the graphics in this particular mod pack are absolutely amazing um but yeah that is our quick rundown for the space exploration mod and um this particular oh actually no data cards i just showed data cards data cards with every other part of this mod uh, are over here so we've got this one making data counts, which requires some blue thingies, some green thingies, some purple thingies, and some orange thingies to make a data, a, a universal simulation. Uh, make some yellow cards. Um, every single science pack needs some amount of yellow cards and pumps back out. It brings in one significant data and pumps back out 10 damage cards, junk cards, whatever you want to call them, um, along with, with using that thermofluid that we covered before. So we're going to bring in 200 and we're going to get back 200. So this one actually breaks perfectly even, but it does mean it does need a fluid connection. Um, this particular one over here only requires three of them because obviously we got Jack of not having one particular type. 
There are lots of different recipes. You can just run with one type. You can run with multiple types. Um, as always, the more complicated the recipe is, the less materials you need overall um, brought up from the planet. Same with those junk data cards. We've got data formatting, which gives us a 70% 70 70 chance to get a, a clean card, and 29% chance it ends up as a broken data card. Um, we can refine the recipe through research to go up to 80 and 19, and then we can even get up to 90 and 9%. But same story, you know, there's still a 1% chance you get back nothing at all. Um, so you have been warned. It's it's a very, very interesting mod. It is a very, very expensive mod. Um, I, I strongly suggest, like, this is our data card. Like, out, we've built big enough that this has become required to just clean out junk data cards. And as you can see, they're all mostly running. This is the super cooling area to keep this running. Um, they're not in perfect ratio. It was built for expert. It was built to expand. If we could get these machines up to the next tier, where we could do the next highest research, um, and as you can see, if you've been paying attention on this map, like we're running everything with speed modules. We 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 haven't been at all stingy with the speed modules. Um, we are running everything on solar power because we have some space solar panels over here, which do have a power output of two megawatts each so they make they they're pretty powerful um they are an upgraded version of the standard solar panel you can start off in space with a standard solar panel um but yeah look this mod is crazy this mod is is so over the top if you're looking for something that you really want to spend a lot of time playing i strongly recommend you have a look at this mod either Start now and accept that it is an alpha version. Things will change or wait a couple of months till it's a little bit more stable and then try it then. Um, my only recommendation is heavily, heavily invest in spaceships. And the bigger you can make your cargo ship, the better. Um, we've now made it this size, which means if somebody travels down to the planet and fills up all the chests and then comes back up, normally it's travel down to the planet set lots of requested chests from the buffer chests that if i go back to the planet from these buffer chests like just set the request that we need walk away leave it for 20 minutes um and fly go back to there fly one of these rockets back up that's hopefully been manually filled with all the items you need um, fly that back up to, to space give it 20 minutes half hour and then fly one of these lovely capsules that we i showed off earlier uh one of these guys um, you can just jump in there and just fall down to the planet. Um, yeah. And I actually, I want to show off this. So as said, you had to build platforms in space. We've used the space proper platforms because we're rich. Our solar panels are on the scaffolding one. You can see over here, it's, it's not nearly as pretty. Um, but I do have our super duper over the top large space, space, uh, rocket. And I do want to fly to, because this is not yet implemented in the game. But the idea is it'll have a new end goal where I have 309 known locations out of 500. Um, the idea is you'll be able to fly to these anomaly, anomalies. And there'll be a number of ano anomalies that you can then um, discover and power up, do something with. And um, once you get to those destinations... You can then do something with them, I guess. Um, hopefully power up a few of them and lead to the end game. Um, that's the other thing I need to cover really quickly. That when you're flying through space, there's asteroids in your way. So if you do not have either guns or lasers or something at the front of your spaceship, you're going to have a pretty bruised up cat uh, nose pretty fast. Um, there are no shields. There's no magical way to clear asteroids and space debris out of the way. Uh, apart from guns and lasers. And... I gotta say, uranium ammo does wonders against just general junk. Um, but yeah, as you can see, our spaceship's a little bit over the top. We are traveling to... Well, actually, let's travel... Well, that's the sun's orbit. So that's our sun's orbit. Ooh. Do we run out of power? Nope something break 
that something broke. Oh, I lost a tile in the corner. Uh, this is why this one carries spare parts. Oh, it got rid of the space platform. Uh, copy. That. Put that back. Oh, there's one missing there as well. Obviously, it needs more gun turrets at the edge. Uh, can I go back to flying? There we go. Obviously, I need to go stand over here. Uh, yeah, PLDs do also do a really good job of clearing out stuff. Um, yeah, obviously, with the extra fuel tanks, it wasn't quite enough gunpowder at the edges. Although, we are flying incredibly fast. You know, if I had a slower spaceship, we'd be fine. Anyway, look, this is the mod. This is this is an amazing mod. I'm not going to put you guys through the extra four minutes. I might just go to... That was 122 earlier. Yeah, we might just go... Oh, look, we're still taking damage. Oh, we're taking a fair bit of damage. Yeah, this ship was originally called the Hearse. With a... It's good for getting to your body, but it requires repairs after after each launch. Well, you don't have... Mm, you don't even have ammo input. Uh, yeah, you have some ammo. I want to... Where are we up to? 51 seconds. 51 seconds. We'll, we'll, we'll spend the 51 seconds, then we'll will land on uh, land at the sun, so to speak. Um, yeah, it, it, it's funny. This, as I said, this one was originally called the hearse, um, and yeah, it required a lot of repairs after a very short journey. Um, good for recovering bodies, but that was about it. It was not really designed for anything else. It's got significantly bigger since then. Well, actually about 50% bigger with 50% more engines. Um, I, I, I'd actually... I want to play with this mod, like, you know, more. And see if I can make a U-shaped rocket with, like, layers and layers of engines. And have a very narrow front to it. Um, something we never got around to actually trying during the community map. Anyway! How far? There we go. Arrive at orbit. We're gonna... Do we have any structures here yet? I don't think we do. Uh, no. But let's park ourselves right here. This is our spaceship part, and we can go wander over and stand here and even mine some space all. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was uh, the last community map. I am looking at redoing this mod sometime in the future. Um, and as I said, link up in the top right hand corner if I haven't already. Um, or, or maybe I have already and you just need to click up the top right hand corner now to see where the link was. There is a trailer for the next community map. They're always an open community map. Everybody's welcome to join. It runs for the whole month. Give or take a couple of days. And we'll see where we end up. Oh, and yeah, like I said, this this is the mod that stopped our my community map, my community flat. We we didn't even get to the last space science pack. Um, anything that required deep space science, we we didn't even unlock. Um, we can't even we haven't done any research that requires these yet. Um, so yeah, we didn't get to the bigger and better engines. We didn't get to the antimatter reactors, which I have no idea how they run. Um, we didn't get to the bigger and better spacesuits because that was the other thing you need to have a... If I take that off... It's not going to tell me. Okay. You're going to have a spacesuit on to be able to live in space. This comes pre-equipped with... Uh, has stronger thrusters increased inventory and a larger grid. It has thrusters, which lets me fly around in space and... Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for putting through this, this extra long video. As always, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And I hope to see you on the next community map. All right, bye.